गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टाटा कैम्प डी पब्लिक स्कूल मीठापुर ऑनलाइन क्लासेस माई सेल्फ कविता मोदी योर मस्ट टीचर फॉर क्लास सिक्स गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू चैप्टर टू फैक्टर्स एंड मल्टीपल्स इन दिस चैप्टर आवर टॉपिक्स आर फाइंड द एस सी एफ बाय फैक्टर मैथड फाइंड द एस सी एफ बाय प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन मैथड एंड फाइंड द एस सी एफ बाय कंटिन्यू डिविजन मैथड Our first topic is find the SCF of 12, 30, and 54 by factor method. In this method, first we find the factors of 12, 30, and 54. Let's start with 12. To find the factors of 12, first we write 12 as a product of two numbers. We have to think of all the possible combination of 12. If we list in factors. Always start with one and number itself. So 12 can be written as 1 multiplied by 12 is equal to 12. Is 12 completely divisible by 2? Yes, the product can be written as 2 multiplied by 6 is equal to 12. Take the next number 3. Is 12 completely divisible by 3? Yes, the product can be written as 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 12. Then we move on 4. Which is already covered here. When we know that we had covered all possible product of two numbers, so stop here. So the factors of twelve is equal to one, two, three, four, six, and twelve. Then we find all the factors of thirty. We have to think all the possible combination of thirty. First, we write thirty as a product of two numbers. If you listing factors, always start with one and number itself. So 30 can be written as one multiplied by 30 is equal to 30. Is 30 completely divisible by 2? Yes. The product can be written as two multiplied by 15 is equal to 30. Is 30 completely divisible by 3? Yes. The product can be written as three multiplied by 10 is equal to 30. Is 30 completely divisible by 4? No, so leave them. Is thirty completely divisible by five? Yes, the product can be written as five multiplied by six is equal to thirty. Then we move on six, which is already covered here. When we know that we had covered all possible product of two number, so stop here. So the factors of thirty is equal to one, two, three, five, six, ten, fifteen, and thirty. Then we find. All the factors of 54. First, we write 54 as a product of two numbers. So 54 can be written as 1 multiplied by 54 is equal to 54. Is 54 completely divisible by 2? Yes, the product can be written as 2 multiplied by 27 is equal to 54. Is 54 completely divisible by 3? Yes, the product can be written as 3 multiplied by 18 is equal to 54. Is 54 completely divisible by 4? No, so leave them. Is 54 completely divisible by 5? No, so leave them. Is 54 completely divisible by 6? Yes, the product can be written as 6 multiplied by 9 is equal to 54. Is 54 completely divisible by 7? No, so leave them. Is 54 completely divisible by 8? No, so leave them. Then we move on nine, which is already covered here. When we know that we had covered all possible product of two numbers, so stop here. So the factor of fifty-four is equal to one, two, three, six, nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, and fifty-four. Then we find out the common factors. So the common factors of twelve, thirty, and fifty-four is equal to one, two, three, and six. Then we find out the SCF. So the highest common factor of twelve, thirty, and fifty-four is equal to six. Hope you understand how we will find out the SCF by factor method. This method first we find prime factors of twenty-four, sixteen, and thirty-six by division method. Let's start with twenty-four. Twenty-four is an even number, so we start our prime factorization. By smallest prime number two, so write two to the left of twenty-four and divide. We get twelve. So write twelve below twenty-four. Again, 
12 is an even number so we divide 12 by the smallest prime number 2 so write 2 to the left of 12 and divide we get 6 so write 6 below the 12 again 6 is an even number so we divide 6 by the smallest prime number 2 so write 2 to the left of 6 and divide we get 3 so write 3 below the 6 but 3 is an odd number so we divide 3 by the next smallest odd prime number 3. So write 3 to the left of 3 and divide. We get 1. If we get 1, this means we need to stop here. So the prime factorization of 24 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. Let's find the prime factors of 16. 16 is an even number. So we start our prime factorization by the smallest prime number 2. So write 2 to the left of 16 and divide. We get 8. So write 8 below the 16. Again, 8 is an even number. So we divide 8 by the smallest prime number 2. So write 2 to the left of 8 and divide. We get 4. So write 4 below the 8. Again, 4 is an even number. So we divide 4 by the smallest prime number 2. So write 2 to the left of 4 and divide. We get 2. Again, 2 is an even number, so we divide 2 by the smallest prime number 2. Write 2 to the left of 2 and divide. We get 1. If we get 1, means we need to stop here. So the prime factorization of 16 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. Let's find the prime factorization of 36. 36 is an even number, so we start our prime factorization by the smallest prime number 2. So write 2 to the left of 36 and divide. We get 18. So write 18 below the 36. Again 18 is an even number. So we divide 18 by the smallest prime number 2. So write 2 to the left of 18 and divide. We get 9. So write 9 below the 18. But 9 is an odd number. So we divide 9 by the next odd prime number 3. So write 3 to the left of 9 and divide. We get 3. Write 3 below the 9. Again, 3 is an odd prime number. So we divide 3 by 3. We get 1. If we get 1, means we need to stop here. So the prime factorization of 36 is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3. Then we find the common factors. So common factors of 24, 16 and 36 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2. Then we find the highest common factor. So the highest common factor of 24, 16 and 36 is equal to 4. Hope you understand. Find the HCF by prime factorization method. Our next topic is find the HCF of 345 and 506 by continued division method. In this method, divide the bigger number 506 by the smaller number 345. See the table. 690 is bigger than 506 so we take 345 so write 345 below the 506 how many times one times so write one as the quotient subtract 345 from 506 we get 161 as the remainder now we need to take this remainder as a divisor and divide this number by the previous divisor 345 so divide 345 by 161. See the table. 483 is bigger than 345. So we will take 322. How many times? Count. 2 times. So write 2 as the quotient. Now subtract 322 from 345. We get 23 as the remainder. Again, now we need to take this remainder as the divisor and divide this number by the previous divisor 161. See the table. 23 7 is 161. So write 7 as the quotient and write 161 below 161 and subtract. We get 0. If the remainder is equal to 0, this means we need to stop here. So the divisor of the last step is the SCF of 345 and 506. Some of you might be thinking 
if we know prime factorization method so why to learn long division method if we use prime factorization method to find the scf of large numbers we will get lots of prime factors and it will be very difficult for you but if you use continued division method then you can find the scf of large numbers very easily let's solve one more question find the scf of 1212 6868 and 1111 by continued division method we know that we can only divide one number by another number so we can use only two numbers so how do we find the scf of three numbers by continued division method it is possible to do that let us see how to do it first take any two numbers you can take any two out of the three numbers so suppose i take two numbers in ascending order 1111 and 1212 and find their scf for a time being forget about 6868 and find the scf of 1111 and 1212 by continued division method as we have done earlier so divide the bigger number 1212 by the smaller number 1111 how many times 1111 go into 1212 one time so write 1111 below 1212 and subtract we get the remainder 101 now we need to take this remainder as the divisor and divide this number by the previous number 1111 first we take three digit number 111 because 111 is bigger than 101 and divide how many times 101 go into 111 one time so write 101 below 111 and subtract we get the remainder 10 now pull down one we have 101 how many times 101 go into 101 one time and subtract we get the remainder 0 If the remainder is equal to zero, this means the divisor of the last step is the SCF of one thousand one hundred eleven and one thousand two hundred twelve. So the SCF of one thousand one hundred eleven and one thousand two hundred twelve is one hundred one. See, we found the SCF of just two numbers, one thousand one hundred eleven and one thousand two hundred twelve. But what about six thousand eight hundred sixty-eight? Now. Take six thousand eight hundred sixty-eight and one hundred one, which was the SCF of one thousand one hundred eleven and one thousand two hundred twelve. So we find the SCF of one hundred one and six thousand eight hundred sixty-eight. Divide six thousand eight hundred sixty-eight by one hundred one. First, we take three-digit number because six hundred eighty-six is bigger than one hundred one, and divide. How many times? Does one hundred one go into six hundred eighty six? Six times because one hundred one six jaw six hundred six. So write six hundred six below six hundred eighty six and subtract. We get the remainder eighty. Now pull down eight. We have eight hundred eight. How many times does one hundred one go into eight hundred eight? Eight times because one hundred one. Eight za eight hundred eight. So write eight hundred eight below eight hundred eight and subtract. We get the remainder zero. If the remainder is equal to zero, means the divisor of the last step is the SCF of one thousand one hundred eleven, one thousand two hundred twelve, and six thousand eight hundred sixty eight. So the SCF of one thousand one hundred eleven, one thousand two hundred twelve, and Six thousand eight hundred sixty-eight is one hundred one. Let's solve one more example. Find the SCF of one hundred forty-four, three hundred eighty-four, and one hundred twenty by continued division method. First, we arrange the number in ascending order: one hundred twenty, one hundred forty-four, and three hundred eighty-four. Then we find out SCF of one hundred twenty and one hundred forty-four by continued division method. 
divide the bigger number 144 by the smaller number 120. See the table. 240 is bigger than 144. So we take 120. How many times? One time. So write one as the quotient. Subtract 120 from 144. We get 24 as the remainder. Now we need to take this remainder as the divisor and divide this number by the previous divisor 120. So divide 120 by 24. See the table. 24 fives are 120. So write five as the quotient. Now subtract 120 minus 120. We get zero. If remainder is equal to zero, means the divisor of the last step is the LCM of 120 and 144. Therefore, the LCM of 120 and 144 is 24. But what we need to find is the LCM of 120, 144, and 384. We found the LCM of just two numbers, 120 and 144. But what about 384? So now you will know. Pay attention. Take 384 and 24. Which was the SCF of 120 and 144? Now we need to find the SCF of 24 and 384. That is, we need to divide larger number by smaller number. So we divide 384 by 24. First, we take two digit 38 because 38 is bigger than 24 and divide. How many times does 24 go into 38? One times. So write 24 below the 38 and subtract. We get the remainder 14. Now pull down 4. We have 144. How many times does 24 go into 144? Yes, six times. So write 144 and subtract. Now the remainder is equal to zero. So what will be the LCM? The divisor of the last step. So which is the divisor of last step? Yes, 24. Hence, the SCF of 120, 144, and 384 is equal to 24. Hope you understood how we will find out the SCF by factor method, prime factorization method, and continuum division method. So, students, complete lesson two, worksheet five, question one, two, and three once in Maths CW and Rabu also. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.